in the name of Jesus Christ. The factors responsible for poverty. This is true for Abuja. This is true for Lagos. True for Nigeria. True for any part of Africa. True for America, Europe, wherever. These are universal factors. Number one. What is the first reason, the first factor that is responsible for poverty? My emphasis is the poverty of the saints, believers in Christ. In as much as this message is relevant and cuts across religion, culture, my emphasis in this service tonight is to help make a contribution that brings believers for God's sake out of this demon, this captivity called poverty. Number one, it's to the point. What are the factors responsible for poverty? Please write. Because the Bible says to preach deliverance to the poor. What are the factors? What are the factors responsible for poverty? For many people, especially in the body of Christ, the moment the subject of poverty comes, it is just to pray against it or pray against spirits and so on and so forth. And while that is important, it is important for us or more important to really examine and there are seven factors that I wrote here you will be surprised seven factors anybody who lives with these factors at work in their lives must be poor no matter who you are hallelujah are we blessed and anybody who gets free from these seven factors must be wealthy it has not there's no sentiments please try to believe what I'm telling you Hallelujah. So whilst you are listening to this, some of you in your mind, you will be looking at your life introspectively. You will be looking at your families and wonder, so my sincere father, my sincere mother, my sincere lineage, as sincere as they are, this is what was responsible for the poverty. Most times people just desire to, you know, manifest the blessings to prosper and superstitiously they just hope that one day by a way I cannot explain, I will suddenly stumble into wealth. No, it is deception. And unfortunately, even though respectfully so, men of God, sometimes we are promoters of these kinds of wrong ideologies. So people continue to hope on nothing, holding shadows. And after many years of frustration, they succumb to the temptations of compromise and so on and so forth to preach deliverance to the captives. Are you ready for this seven? Please do not forget this for as long as you are alive. In the name of Jesus Christ. The factors responsible for poverty. This is true for Abuja. This is true for Lagos. True for Nigeria. True for any part of Africa. True for America, Europe, wherever. These are universal factors. Number one. What is the first reason, the first factor that is responsible for poverty? My emphasis is the poverty of the saints, believers in Christ. In as much as this message is relevant and cuts across religion, culture, my emphasis in this service tonight is to help make a contribution that brings believers for God's sake out of this demon, this captivity called poverty. Number one. Ignorance or incomplete knowledge of God's financial system. This is the first reason for poverty in the body of Christ. Please write it and pay attention. Ignorance or incomplete knowledge. Please, if you're writing, underline ignorance and underline incomplete knowledge. Ignorance or incomplete knowledge of God's financial system. Ignorance or incomplete knowledge of God's financial system. This is the first reason why believers, even though they have come into Christ, are not able to manifest the blessing of the kingdom that we claim to have. I have preached again and again against ignorance, that ignorance is dangerous. And then, to my mind, equally dangerous is incomplete knowledge when people have incomplete knowledge the equations will always not add up because incomplete knowledge is the sponsor of imbalance hallelujah when your knowledge is not holistic as touching a subject 
you will find yourself doing the best you know with what you know. But what you know may not be enough to give you what you desire. Ignorance and incomplete knowledge. The second reason why men and especially the saints are in financial captivity is I wrote here the absence of value that is needed and useful. Please write that down. The absence of value that is needed and useful. Not just the absence of value, the absence of value that is needed and useful. There is a clamor for value in the body of Christ and that is wonderful. Except that you need to understand that the value you present must be needed and useful. If the value is not needed and useful, most likely you will still remain poor, even though valuable. So the narrative before now is that once you are valuable, there seems to be a guarantee that you will prosper. I submit to you by wisdom, honesty, and the word that that is not accurate. There are many valuable people who are poor and sadly may remain so. Do you know why? Because the world around them does not need the value that they are providing. Value must coincide with the law of exchange for reward to happen. That means no matter what you are carrying, if I do not need what you are carrying, for instance, if you come to me and you say, Apostle, I want to sell for you baby Serilac for me. Now, it's valuable, but not valuable for me. Are we together? And if I am your only client, get ready to be poor. You, 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 you get what I'm saying now. Now, that does not mean that baby product is wrong. Simply because you are now surrounded by an individual who does not need what you're carrying. So there are many people who just believe that I am valuable. Unfortunately, their region, their, their, their clientele does not need the value that they are providing. If you are a professional typist, for instance, chances are excellent that by now, you may be tending towards poverty if that is the only value you have to offer. Why? Because time has shifted people and made your value not needed. Hallelujah. If your only value is to teach people basic computer appreciation, chances are excellent you are going to be poor. Because even people in the village now with an Android device, they have learned the things people used to queue in business centers to learn. Am I, am I right on that? The second reason why the saints are poor is that in bringing value to the table, I'm buttressing on point two, they do not pay attention to those around them. That means there is no intelligent problem analysis. They just come up with any value and hope that people, whether they need it or not, will patronize them. Are we together? That means if your value is not solving any direct problem that suits the context of your civilization, you are going to be poor. It's as simple as that. Number three, is someone learning? The third reason why God's people especially are in financial captivity is lack of productivity and excellence. Please write it down. I didn't give you a scripture reference for number two. You may want to quickly write this down. Matthew 25 from verse 24 to 27. There is the reference. Remember the three people, talents, he gave one, five, he gave one, um, two, he gave one, one. But the other one was called wicked and unprofitable. Hallelujah. So number three. Lack of productivity and excellence. This is a very important one. Because this even affects people who are valuable. Lack of productivity. Do you know what productivity is? Please look up. Let me define for you in simple terms what productivity is. Productivity is the ability to translate your value into products and services 
are we together, that are packaged and served to a targeted consumer base with excellence. That is productivity. You are not productive if you are valuable. You are not productive if you have refined your value until your value is packaged into products and services that are served with excellence to a targeted consumer base. If that does not happen, you are not productive. You may be valuable, but not productive. The third reason why believers are poor is lack of productivity and excellence. In Daniel chapter 5, let's read 12 to 14. Daniel chapter 5. The Bible speaking about this gentleman called Daniel, it says for as, an, as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams, showing of hard sentences, dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar. Now let Daniel be called and he will show the interpretation. This is not just a man. I hope you know that there were many dreamers, but there was something about this, this gentleman called Daniel. He added excellence to his value. The Bible says, and then was Daniel brought up before the king. Follow carefully now. And the king spake and said, Daniel, art thou that Daniel, which art of the children of captivity of Judah, whom the king, my father, brought out of Jewry? 14. I have even heard of thee that the spirit of the gods is in thee and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in you. Now, I don't have the time to read further. I would have shown you that it took more than the ability to interpret the dream for the king to hear Daniel. His composure, his understanding protocol, he kept quiet and allowed the king to speak. And when it was time, he said, oh, king, I respect you, but please let your gift be kept. He told the king, my value is greater than your gift. Don't bait me with gifts. Have your reward to yourself. Nevertheless, I will interpret it. I am more concerned with problems than money. And the rewards he later got was greater than what the king gave him. Because if he had collected this, that's what most people would do. So it takes more than being valuable. You need to be excellent. And excellence would demand rejecting certain temporary rewards to get other nobler and superior rewards. What is the fourth key? The absence of strategic relationships. Please start that one. That is the major reason for the poverty of many. I submit to you. If I am to draw a pie chart and represent all these points, this one will take over 65%. This one, the reason why people are poor. Listen. There are three things if you don't have, you will remain perpetually poor. Number one, value. If you don't have value, have relationships. If you don't have relationships, have character. If you don't have these three things, you have signed a contract with poverty forever. Yes, sir. If you lack value, you lack strategic relationships, you lack character. Then you are forget about the blessing of the Lord being made manifest in your life. So number four, write please very quickly, the absence of strategic relationships. In John chapter 5, popular scripture, reading from verse 1 to 7, but let's look at 7 for emphasis. The, the man at Bethesda, Jesus asked the man, how come you have been so long here? Do you want to be made whole? And the man said, I have no man. That is my issue. Not I have no strength. At least among all the important folks, I seem to be better than others. But the man who will give me the leverage and his one year or one day translated to 38 years of stagnation because there was no man. He did not say I have no skill. He did not say I have no strength. He most likely was better than somebody. Do you know what it means for one day to become 38 years? And the simple reason is I have no man. I have no man. There was a crippled man who's had relationships and they came to Jesus' crusade insisting that that man will be healed. And when they found out that there was a crowd, they said, listen, we are not going back with this, our friend. 
He may not have the power to reach out to Jesus. He may not have the energy to shout, have mercy on me. But he had relationships and they tore the zinc. In other words, we would discuss with the owner of this venue later on. But as far as this man is concerned, not for our sake, they uncovered the roof, the Bible says. And Jesus called it faith. Not carelessness, not wickedness. He called it faith. That means relationships can enhance your faith. Strategic relationships. I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, this is where unbelievers cheat believers hands down because we have not learned the value and the excellency of strategic relationship. The average believer will not pay attention to invest in quality, destiny-defining relationships. You know why? Because we, we feel that we are immune with factors and systems of advantage like favor, like the Holy Spirit. And sometimes you hear us brag and say, I don't need any man. If you are saying that to describe the sovereign power of God, you are right. But if you are saying that to mean that on earth here, yeah, you do not need anybody, go and think again. That God had to send an angel to come and carefully discuss with a woman to make her womb available for Jesus to arrive. Look at all the men that played strategic roles in his life. From the prophets, Simeon the prophet, Anna the prophetess, Simon of Cyrene, Joseph of Arimathea, the owner of the donkey that he, 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 he carried for triumphant entry. How could Jesus do without men? As far as he was upon the earth, he needed men. As God, he may not need men, but as a man, he needed men. The reason why people are poor, especially believers, is bankruptcy of spiritual empowerment bankruptcy of spiritual empowerment or the absence for an easy expression of spiritual empowerment many have not learned that there is a spiritual dimension to genuine lasting wealth there is a spiritual dimension i repeat to genuine lasting wealth it is called the power to prosper Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. The Bible says, But thou shalt remember the Lord your God, for it is he that giveth thee the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swore unto your fathers as it is this day. God can give men power to prosper. God can give men power to prosper. And many have rejected that grace. Many have rejected that impartation. There is an anointing that comes upon a man that primes your mind in an unusual way to think, coming up with witty inventions and ideas. That anointing translates to favor, attracting people, attracting circumstances, attracting opportunities. The bankruptcy of spiritual empowerment and I'm happy you came to church tonight because you will not live without that grace. In the name of Jesus, I repeat that you will not live without that grace. That that grace will come upon you the same way the Holy Ghost came upon Jesus. It will mantle you that when you leave this place, you will be able to define the kinds of anointings that are on your head. In the name of Jesus. Can I give you the remaining two? Number six. The sixth reason why people are poor and remain poor and sadly may remain poor is impatience. The sixth impatience, Proverbs 13, 11. Impatience. Let's read together. One to read. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, the Bible says, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. Let's read one more time. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor. One of the major reasons why people become poor is they want to become rich fast. God gives speed, but he does not rush men. There is a difference between rushing and speed. Are we together? The difference between rushing and speed is the same difference between throwing a thing up and allowing it grow. 
when you throw a stone up or you throw a plant up, imagine that I hold this flower now or a, a plant and I throw it up because I want it to be tall fast. Will it come down? Absolutely. But if I water it and allow it to grow, what happens? That growth remains sustained and it remains sustained because it is connected to source. There are many people who want to become rich overnight and don't get me wrong God can bless people and turn your your morning to to rejoicing overnight after an extended period of training it is the manifestation that is overnight not the training please listen when you hear somebody tells you I got blessed overnight find out the training process for instance the Holy Ghost came suddenly but the training was not suddenly Three and a half years of training for a sudden manifestation of the spirit. So you find someone in the school of wealth, in the school of the spirit, the school of kingdom prosperity for a long time and overnight God opens the doors. But I assure you, I'm, I'm speaking especially to my generation because we have an obsession. The moment it looks like you want things to happen very fast, and many of us have mismanaged what God has given us and brought ourselves to perpetual penury. Do you know that the pressure to get rich fast can be an addiction? Look up, please. The same way you can be addicted, uh, taking, uh, you know, drugs, uh, cocaine, and all these kinds of things. There are people who are addicted no matter what God gives them. They want to see how they can make it fast. And some is because of pressure. Because we use physical things around to define the presence of faith. So if I see a jeep, if I see a duplex, some mansion somewhere, I see you flashing designers all through, most likely you have faith. I have taught you. It is not accurate. Serious people don't think like that. Are we together? Impatience. Say in the name of Jesus, I destroy the spirit of impatience. Yes, sir. And Jesus increased, Luke 2, 52. He grew, he increased in wisdom, he increased in stature, he increased in favor with God and with men. This is true for ministry, this is true for business, this is true for leadership, this is true for personal finance. There is the law of process. As powerful, watch this, as powerful as the word incarnate was, when he entered the womb of Mary, you would think Jesus should develop in one week. After all, the father wants, you know, believers to be saved. Mary had to go through the natural course, is that true, of carrying a baby. When Elisha prophesied to the woman in Shunem, he said, according to the time of life. There are things that when God wants to help you, he will grant you patience to endure. He will not necessarily fast track the process. Because there are things, the lesson you learn on the journey is greater than what you obtain. In fact, it is what maintains what you obtain. So the Bible says, wealth that is gotten by vanity. Unfortunately, there are many people today who are wealthy. They cannot defend their wealth because it did not come by growth. So they mismanage it. You find young people mismanaging their parents' wealth and inheritance in one year, two years, you find out that, you know, a wealth estate that was built over 20, 30, 40 years diminishes in less than two years because they handed it over to children who did not have the mental constructs to maintain it. Please refer to my message, Redefining Inheritance. Listen to it very carefully redefining inheritance i teach there that there are five kinds of inheritance that every father every leader every superior must transfer to those who are coming and if you don't you have destroyed the generation coming money and physical things is the least and the fifth of that inheritance the first and the highest inheritance you can give any man is your convictions your convictions is transferable. That is what made you you. 
Now, in, in Africa, we believe that loving children means giving them access to anything, anyhow, when they want, without training. After all, is my child. So we do not have third, fourth, fifth generation. There are very few regions in Africa and Nigeria that can perpetuate wealth. Let me give us the last. Laziness. It's as simple as that. Laziness. Laziness. Proverbs 20 and verse 4. Jesus. Freedom from financial captivity. Let's read verse 4. One to read. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg in harvest and have nothing. Let's read one more time. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore he shall beg in harvest. You know the meaning of this? That means the person will say, well, honestly, um, Abuja is too hot. Abuja is too cold. Are we together? There's terrorists, there's, there, there, there's terrorism, there's kidnapping everywhere. I can't risk my life. No. It should not be. The Bible says he will beg in harvest. Hallelujah. Can you again lay your hands on your head and say, Father, connect me to strategic relationships even in this season. First, oh God, make me one who is worth being friends with. Life will be hard. You're a man of God. Listen to me. No matter the call of God upon your life, you will depend on strategic relationships to rise. Go ahead. Are you praying? Please pray. Please pray. You came to church. You need a friend that sticks closer than a brother. You need men that can stand for you and say, under my watch, your children will never beg for bread. Not when I'm alive. I'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life. I'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life. I'll be here helping you all of the days of my life. I'll be here helping you all of the days of my life. I'll be here holding you all of the days of my life I'll be here holding you all of the days of my life listen if you have friends who love your money alone love your anointing alone love your ministry alone MOG, if you leave ministry today, the people who love you, will they still love you? CEO, if you leave your job today, can they, have you not seen politicians who lost elections and in a moment, everybody who is saying yes, I just left them. Who is the next person? Our world is full of selfishness. Let me give you an advice. When you find people who love you for who you are, Pay the price and keep them. Swallow your pride and keep them. Not everybody has that time to love you for who you are. This is wisdom.